Hello and welcome to this special webinar, Taking Your First Steps, Integrating Technology into Your Primary Classroom, presented by Robert Pronovost. I am the Ravenswood City School District STEM Coordinator, as well as a Q um, and ISTE Emerging Leader Teacher of the Year 2012, and a Google Certified Teacher as well. You'll see this QR code uh, is basically a barcode you can scan with your smartphone. It will take you to the exact same place as this link will, um, which is this website, which will show you all the tools I'm going to be covering during this session. <laughs> I like to show this video um, when first starting out talking about taking your first steps in technology because it's a lot like taking your first steps to walk and some people walk at different paces some people start with technology at different paces and you really need support you need to keep trying um, and what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for another person. So I'm going to be sharing a lot of tools that I have used in my classroom or others have used in their classrooms. Just because they work for me or for them does not mean that they're going to necessarily work for you. Uh, but you might get some ideas. You might try some of these, which might lead to something else that will work uh, even better for you than it even did for me. The first place I like to start is talking about what if you don't have the tools? Because I know when I started in my classroom, I had two desktops sitting in the back of the room that ran Windows XP rather slowly. Um, and that was those were all the tools I had in my classroom. And so I found a lot of tools and technology through Donors Choose through other grants that we found, uh, by talking to friends and kind of basically if they were going to get rid of a computer, taking it and, you know, just because it didn't work perfectly for them didn't mean that it didn't work uh, for our purposes in our classroom. Uh, Craigslist, I would buy, you know, $25, $50 computers that people were looking to get rid of uh, and just use them in my classroom because I figured that was better than nothing. Um, and nearby businesses, I know that in our area we've been especially lucky and we have received some donations from Facebook and Apple um, and HP to allow us to use some tools in our classroom. Uh, before I go on, I do want to show you Donors Choose. So Donors Choose is a website where you can basically ask for any kind of project, any need that you have in your classroom. So for instance, if I look in our area right now, then it would or should come up with a whole bunch of different things that teachers are asking for. So I know for me, I have asked for and received many, many tools. Um, from classroom libraries to, let's see, iPods for listening centers to everyday math manipulatives, iPads, whiteboard paint, 
a Mac Mini, uh, many other things for my classroom. And this, for instance, is my first Donors Choose grant that I ever asked for, which was uh, my first year. Um, we were looking for books, basically because we had very few books in our classroom. Uh, so I got a whole bunch of book sets and it was funded. It was actually uh, funded by many people, including Rivendale Bicycle Works, uh, so really, um, it can be a really rewarding project and in general, all you have to do, oh, and I do see there was only one donor for this one, but I had many donors for other ones. Um, but really all you have to do is send a picture, some pictures of your kids using them and generally some thank you notes and that is what you have to do in exchange for whatever kind of tools or things that you might be looking for for your classroom. Now, one place I like to suggest is to start with what you already use. Here are some tools up here that you may already be using in your everyday life that you may find a way to integrate into your, your classroom in a meaningful way. So I'll start with Pinterest. Pinterest, you can use it to collect and find so many different ideas from integrating technology into the classroom to just in interesting math work, how to organize your classroom. But you also can use this as having Pinterest boards that your families can contribute to. So families can go on at home and add to your geometry board of the different kinds of geometry, the pictures that they found around their home, uh, things they found online, news articles that they could submit to a current events Pinterest board. There's lots of ways that you could use Pinterest to engage your students at home and also to collect materials for yourself. Facebook. Yes, I know that Facebook is blocked in many districts, um, including our own. I do not necessarily agree with that in every case because I think that it, there are places where there, it is being used very valuably, especially in communication from parents and schools to, or from, sorry, teachers and schools to parents. Fakebook allows you to basically have your students create uh, fake profiles on famous people. So looking down here, we've got Frederick Douglass. We've got um, so many different people. So I can say, okay, well, how about James Madison? And here then I will find a fake book that somebody has created on James Madison. And generally they'll have kind of their interactions with other people who they might have been friends with at the time, uh, James Madison advertising his book and different people who would like that. Um, it's really just kind of a new engaging way to get students involved in history and character biographies. And you don't have to do it all online. There are actually Facebook templates. You could have them work on this during their writing workshop or during their history time and then during small group work, have students two, four at a time, go onto the computers and type them up into fake book. Even better, you can go into Edmodo, which is a free, open, basically Facebook for schools. So it can be locked down just within one school, within one class. Um, and it really allows uh, more interaction. So you could have students who are characters from the books that you've read who actually have to interact and think about how their characters, who their characters would associate with, whose, char whose uh, Facebook walls that they would participate in. Um, it's just kind of taking the current tools and using them in a way to engage students in what you're already doing in your classroom. Twitter. 
Twitter's another place. This is my Twitter feed right now. Um, I actually use this to stay in communication with a lot of educators around the world. Um, you can see that there are people recommending apps. There's different uh, articles that people are sharing. There's also lots of chats. So um, you can chat with teachers at your same grade level. There's a California educators chat. Um, there are just so many different chats that you could participate in if you're interested. And I will have other sessions and tutorials about Twitter. So please feel free to uh, watch or talk to me about those in the future. But Lisa Highfill, she is a fifth grade teacher in Pleasanton and her class, they tweet out the things they're doing in their class. And it's not just today we're learning about multiplication. We are reading books. They actually try to engage their readers with sharing what they're doing. So they actually might start with this, a 140 character space uh, worksheet, which is especially great if you print it on cardstock and put it inside of a sheet protector. Uh, you can write on it over and over to try to refine your words to be exactly what you want them to be. And then they figure out if what they're going to say is the best way to communicate to their audience. And their audience are pretty much educators and classes from around uh, the world. And you'll see they only follow four different people. And I'm sure that those are probably just classes that they follow. They have 312 educators and classes that follow them so they can participate in conversations with them. And, you know, I know that in the lower grades that we have a, there is a national policy about not being able to use these social media tools below the age of 13. So these are actually things where you can have kids work on the actual sheet. And then when they've got it all written up exactly the way they want to communicate it, you can type it in and you can submit it. Students aren't actually doing the the participation but they are contributing and they are part of that broader conversation Instagram they also use Instagram you can use Instagram to share photos of things that you guys are learning uh, different objects the like going back to that geometry Thing, uh, all the different shapes that they see in the classroom. I had voicemail up there, podcasts. You can actually use this website, iPatio, and it allows you to leave a message, basically. Call their phone number, leave a message, and it's a podcast that anybody can watch. So you actually could go up here and put in all the homework tell just call it up say today's homework is x y and z and then if anybody wants to find out what the homework is and they are not sure they can go to this website um, they can download the iphone android app if your families don't necessarily have uh, those tools at home well then there's remind 101 and remind 101 allows you to basically stay in commu communication with classes or groups of people via text. And the great thing about using Remind 101 is that they have all the phone numbers and they communicate everything back and forth. So I can text to Remind 101 and they text out to the whole class. And that way parents don't have my phone number. I don't have their phone number. And every record of our communication has been stored here. So there's no kind of possibilities of wrongdoing. Karaoke, maybe you like to sing and just, you know, sing to, to songs that are on the radio. So here's a song that I did just for uh, my wife 
Jenna's kindergarten class uh, when all the kindergartens, 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 all the kindergartens. Now put your hands up. Just start school, learning the rules, doing the kindergarten thing. Counting to ten, ABCs win. We have fun when we sing. Reading a lot, we do what we're taught. We share our things like friends do. Writing our names, playing some games. We all love our school. So all the kindergartens come and jump around. 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 Obviously, this was just a little bit more fun of a song, but I know many other people who have used this uh, to create songs about the topics that they're going to be learning about, uh, to have students create songs based on what they've learned. Um, and you can also go the other route, which is to just take some free background track. Um, you can actually look for Creative Commons audio tracks online um, or I use GarageBand which allows me to uh, basically pull in loops uh, so I can see here do I like this piano loop if I do I drag it in and I can drag in all different kinds of loops and just create a song here and I'll actually let you listen to a song uh, that I created um, this way as well. It's a basically a rap to teach uh, subtraction. You ready? It's subtraction time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's try this out. Four, three, two, one. More on top. No need to stop. Ten ones more Numbers the same Zero's the game Actually a really fun a uh, song that all my students really just love singing. Um, you'll notice, you know, the recording quality is not great. You could hear dogs barking in the background. Um, I created those little images just in PowerPoint. Um, but it's just a way of bringing a, a different style, um, a different modality to teaching. Uh, and I'd had students who would sing this during lunchtime They'd sing it during the day when they were getting distracted. And you know what? I'd ra much rather have them singing this than some of the other songs that they might bring into the classroom to begin with. So let's say you're not going to start with something that you're already doing. Uh, you just, you're not sure how you would use Facebook or Instagram or any of those tools in your classroom. Another idea is to start where the pain is. And what I mean by that is, what are you really, really having a hard time with in your classroom? Is it classroom management? Is it keeping up with grades? Is it organizing all the different resources that you want to bring into the classroom? Is it quite simply having students clean up at cleanup time and you not having to go around and tell them all the time to clean up? Well, you can try to integrate technology into one of those places. Now I'll start with classroom management. Uh, when I started out, I tried the cards, I tried the clipboard, I tried behavior charts at desks, and every single iteration really, it was hard. Um, I never found one that was quite right um, until I found Class Dojo. 
and class dojo basically is a website that allows you as a teacher to keep track of behavior um, to store that you can share it with the students and with parents both of them can log in at home they can see how they've been doing um, and so this is just a sample class but you can see that I have four kids in my class um, and perhaps Isaac's doing a great job. I can give them a positive mark for you know their participation. Now you can have all positives in here. You can have all negatives. You can have a combination of both. You can have your whole class in here. You can have just four students. It's up to you how this tool can be used effectively in your own. So Isaac was really participating. Ansel, you know, is just having a hard time, just out of her chair. Now, I don't keep this up for the class to see. I actually keep it on my um, phone. Um, and in fact, I can show you how I do it um, through my iPad. But you can also do this um, on your phone. You can do it on your uh, iPad any kind of tool you have so I'm gonna actually drag this over so you can see my iPad and in my iPad I go to classroom demo uh, and then I can do the same thing here and then I can give them their you know great insight I can also select a student I could select all the students and give them all a mark I'm actually going to unselect them I can also select a random student so instead of, oh, so look at that. Diane has been selected. Uh, so it's really, um, it allows you to do equity sticks. It allows you to keep track of participation, however you wish to use this in your classroom. The great thing is though, that when I end class, um, I can see how the whole class has been doing this week. Uh, I can see how they've been doing all time. I can see how they've been doing from week to week. I can send this information to parents. I can download the reports as PDFs. Uh, you know, when I used it in my class, students, their families didn't necessarily have uh, the computers at home. So I would actually just print out the PDFs and send them home. And I began by sending them home if students had kind of a really rough day, less than 50% positive. Uh, but then eventually it got to the point where those students were seeing such growth and such change uh, that they would begin to ask me if they could take home their positive ones. And of course, I would let them. I let them take it home for that positive day that they had where they had 80%, 90%, 100% positive points. And then it got to a point where they wanted to take that home. And I said, nope, we have to wait until the week is done. So you've got to have a whole week where it's positive. And then they got to the month. And I mean, at that point, they're really managing their own uh, behavior. They're, they're, they're in control of themselves. Uh, so we didn't even really have to come to Class Dojo. But I would still keep track so we could see their positive progress from month to month, from week to week. <laughs> Now, another tool for managing your classroom is Doceri. Doceri allows you to control your computer from your iPad if you happen to have one. So I'm going to show you my iPad right now, and I'm going to open up Doceri. And so Doceri allows me, as long as this is going to connect, let's see, uh, connect through computer. Doceri allows me to control my computer from my iPad. So you can see right here, this is my main screen on my computer. Uh, and it is quite messy right now, but I can annotate on top of it. I can throw a whiteboard background on there and then wipe the screen and you don't see what I'm doing right now but I can choose from all different colors 
of markers. I can change all these different things. And the students, all they see is what I'm writing. And maybe I maybe actually we're working on in math, and so I want us to have graph paper. And the great thing is I could actually take this iPad over to a student and say, okay, so we've got 912 plus 34. And I can ask the students to show me, how do you do this? And they can show the class they can write on here while they're talking to the class. They could just write it and I can explain. But it's a way that I can bring this around and have students participate without getting out of their seats. I can see what students are doing um, and I'm not tied to the front of the room. So Doceri allows me to control my desktop and also project and write up in front of the class on my, white, on my iPad. And I'm going to close that out right now. Okay. So it's just another tool that you might use for classroom management. And while I'm talking about Doceri and showing your computer and controlling your computer through your iPad, I do want to talk about Reflector. Uh, Reflector basically allows you to do the opposite. It allows you to do what I'm doing right here, which is to show your iPad on your computer, which is a great way if I have an app that I really found that demonstrates something that I want to teach to my students, then I can project it up on my computer and teach it to my students just in that way and so I'm going to move that aside right now but that is called reflector um, and they actually let you uh, try it out on a limited time trial uh, just like Doceri does to see if this is something that's useful for your classroom grading in grade so InGrade is a website that allows you to keep track of, well, really everything, but it's especially great for grade books. So I can create assignments and keep track of data um, through this. And I'll actually let uh, this guy explain it um, through this video. Click on the new assignment. A new assignment comes up and we also get assigned New assignment comes up, and we also get assign uh, assignment names. So we'll say unit test that we type in there, possible points. Let's just say that students can earn a total of 150 points on this test. That's going to go under category assignment. What's so the due date? Um, this would usually uh, typically be used for if you want to create the assignment now and then it's due at a certain time, but we're going to go ahead and leave that where it is and scroll down. So as you see here, these are the four students that I have added to this class, uh, Larry, Laura Piper, Larry Piper, Laura Piper, Dane Edson, Laura Sets, and um, those are my in-laws and my parents down here, not too creative. So we'll go ahead and we'll just assign pretty much just a max amount of points. We're not worry about percentages here because I've already set that up. So we're just going to say that uh, Larry here will be generous and give him uh, 140 points out of 150. Laura will give 126, which is being very arbitrary here. Uh, Dane, we're going to give him 135. And then my dear old mom, how about we give her 145 points out of the possible 150. So once you get those add in there, you can just go ahead and click the submit button. And there you go. It pops up. Now you see, here's a unit test that we just did. 140 points, 126, 135, 145. And this is really keeps track of the four ones we did. That's the first one I did. I've got, got them arranged in the ones I created first back here, then second, then third, then fourth. But so as you can see, it's just a simple way to uh, keep track of grades online. And I know quite a few teachers who swear by using NGRADE to keep track of grades. Now, perhaps you have just a whole bunch of these different things that you found and you think it is great I want to use them in my classroom but I 
going back and forth between all these different sites and all these different tools. I just don't know that I can manage it. So Ed Canvas comes in as a way to organize all those resources and keep them together. So Ed Canvas basically is a way of collecting all the different things. So you see that there are uh, canvases that people have created on all these different uh, subjects, such as reviewing parts of speech. Um, this is actually done by a great uh, primary grade teacher, Joan, uh, who goes by Flourishing Kids on Twitter. And you see that she's put a whole bunch of Schoolhouse Rock videos here, along with a PDF that I'm assuming is going to ask them to, yep, it, here is the worksheet that they fill out afterwards. Um, she just has put it all together so she can go straight through and knows that at the end, then they do this. Now, they, she might have them use, do this on their own. She might actually use this to show all the different things in front of the class. I have created a similar Ed Canvas for RNET. So I made videos for all the different things that you might need in RNET. And all you have to do is click on one and you can play that video. Stop it so it doesn't go into the video. Uh, but so Ed Canvas is a great way to collect all those different resources that you might uh, find throughout the web, throughout these presentations, um, and to just store them all together um, by subject, by topic, what, however you want, uh, by class period, whatever works for you. And you can make these public or private. Now, I'm going to show you Appomac Timer. They also have a free MP3 alarm clock. If you search for free MP3 alarm clock on Google or Yahoo, Bing, you will be able to find one that's for the PC as well. So just because I'm talking about a lot of these things on the Mac does not mean uh, that they will not work on the PC. In fact, pretty much everything I've talked about today uh, will also work on your PC except for GarageBand. So Appomac Timer, basically what it is, is it allows me to set an alarm. So I can set an alarm and say that at 1045, I want this to play the sound file called cleanup. And then I will turn this alarm on. I'm going to turn down the volume right now because I know Last time I did this, the alarm went off rather loudly. Um, but you can see it even countdowns, counts down the time for me. But if I've got a small group going, then I can set this to go off three minutes before recess. And students will know that it's time to clean up when this goes off. And I can keep working with my small group. And that cleanup song is just a transition song. I actually have a folder full of transition songs uh, that if you're interested, um, I have them shared, but you can also email, ask me, and I'd be happy to uh, send that to you as well, uh, or even burn a CD and send it that send it your way. But basically, Appomac or whatever other kind of alarm clock timer that you want to use, it allows you to have students control their own cleanup. So you don't have to manage all of that. You can keep working with your small group and know that the students are gonna be cleaned up because the way that we did it, I played the cleanup song three minutes beforehand. Then when it was time to go to recess, I would look and see if it was just check, make sure it was clean, excuse groups who were, who were ready, uh, wait for those who were not, and I could be finishing with my small group, continue to work with them, or have released them back to their desks as well. Now, 
I'm going into a bit of a different area right now, which is students using technology. So all the things that I've talked about so far are really tools that you can use in your classroom. And now I'm going to talk about some things that students can do for as you start out with using technology in your classroom. Now, again, I want to emphasize that I'm going through all these things. I really think that if you're starting out taking your first steps in using technology, choose one of these things. Then once you feel like you've got that handled, then add another tool to your tool belt. And then eventually, you'll have a full tool belt. But you want to make sure that you know how to use that first tool really well before you go and add a whole bunch of other tools and you know get perhaps confused or just fed up with each tool not working properly for you. So I'm going to start by talking about how you can use how you can have students use technology in literacy centers. And I'm going to very quickly just go through and close some of these because I'd want to make sure that I have enough room to explain everything well. I really appreciate you sticking through this so far. And I hope that I will share a lot of great tools with you. And I hope that you will find some that are useful to your classroom as well. Okay. So I'm going to start with Listening Center. Listening Center, you could get an iPod, have put books on there, audiobooks, and have students listen to them. If you have a computer, you could use Tumble Book Library. Um, they do have a free trial. Uh, you do have to pay for it if you want to use it regularly. Um, but you can see from all these different books they're showing, there's actually a great collection of books and books that students love to read. Miss Malarkey Doesn't Live in Room 10, um, Diary of a Fly-ish. That These are online audiobooks with the book there. So you don't have to have students go look and find the, for the, find the books. Um, it's all right here. So Tumble Books is a great collection of audio books that students can listen to and read uh, on the computer. Reading Center. You might want to have your students try out Raz Kids. Raz Kids, I believe, is $70 for the year for your entire class. I used to use my EPAC grant for that, um, and I know many other teachers who have found grants um, or who even take that $70 out of their own pocket to, to pay for this because it's actually really valuable. And I'm going to let uh, them explain some of how Raz Kids can be used in your classroom. Hi, and welcome to Raz Kids. This website houses hundreds of animated ebooks spread over 27 levels of difficulty. With Raz Kids, your students get the reading practice they need anytime, anywhere they have an internet connection. On this site, students can listen to the book while viewing the highlighted words or phrases, read the book at their own pace, record the book to practice fluency, and take a comprehension quiz to check understanding. Raz Kids also provides you with a classroom management tool that allows you to roster up to 36 students, create assignments, and access a variety of reports. Our individual and class reports will help you monitor student progress, and our formative quiz report will help you determine the instruction needed for each student. Raz Kids also features a time-saving online running record tool to determine the appropriate reading level for each student, as well as monitor their progress. The website also features a motivational RAS Rocket, where students can enter and spend stars they earned for completing their assignments. For customers that have a subscription to both RAS Kids and Reading A to Z, you will have access to hundreds of additional leveled eBooks and interactive comprehension quizzes in the On Your Own area. Right here, uh, but really you can see that this is an online leveled library. 
uh, full of books. You can assign students levels, allow them to browse by whatever level they want. You can assign running records. Um, the RAS rocket they talked about, you can actually turn it off if it's a distraction for certain students. Um, and it's actually pretty great the way that they log in because they can have a regular word password or for the younger kids, they can have images that they click on. So like the red truck and that's how they log in is by clicking on those right combination of pictures. I'm gonna go um, into spelling right now. So spelling, I'm gonna show you edge creations and how you could use it for spelling. You can actually use edge creations for all sorts of things uh, for teaching and you can see down here, uh, people are teaching about Hinduism, integrals, uh, inequalities, adjectives, but I used it to teach my kids their spelling words. So here you are. Frog. Frog. Jumped onto the lily pad. Frog. out with a little picture and I write the word I said it a few times so students I mean it's basically how I would introduce the spelling cat. words with my groups the cat meow but by doing it here on this video I'm able to save it students can go back to it they actually could view it at home uh, they could view it on iPads on computers um, even if you don't have that many computers, you can have just one computer that's dedicated to this. Um, and I'll show you just how easy it can be to create one of these videos. So I'm going to open up Edgy Creations on my iPad. And what I'm going to do, let's see if this will take, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to record. Today we are working on short vowels like in hat or igloo or in cut. Now you'll notice that they sound different than long vowels such as the word cute such as the word cake, you'll notice that they are, they don't sound, spell, they don't have the sound of their name. Now I save this, I'm gonna save it as short vowels. Obviously I'd put a little bit more work into that um, I can say that just my students can view it, anybody can view it, I'm going to make that public and save it. Probably should not have chosen mathematics. Uh, but you can see all these different uh, lessons that I have up here. I have, t I have lessons on addition, I have lessons on subtraction. Uh, so students can listen to these during the, the spelling center to practice their words. Uh, they could actually make their own videos if they have iPads or computers to do so. Uh, they can practice those spelling words and then I can listen to them, see if they're pronouncing words right. Um, and I can do this when I without them being right there. So I can do this during my recess, during my lunchtime, after school, during prep. Uh, it's just a way of making that time more valuable. Now there are lots of different games. Um, PBS Kids is a great collection of them that can help students practice. Yeah, coloring pages. Wow. The messy attic. That can help students practice different. Uh, sub this is our beginning sounds machine. We got it especially for our library because it's very quiet. Are you ready to try it? Let's go. Which of these words? Jam, hook, tire, begins with this sound. 
So as you can see, there this is a beginning sounds game, but they have games for pretty much any topic that you're looking for um, on PBS Kids or Starfall. There's just many places, and really you just have to Google it, search for whatever you're looking for, and you can find it. Um, another place that you can find a lot of these is in Symbaloo. So if I went and I searched Symbaloo first grade reading, I would get a whole bunch of different collections that teachers have put together of reading websites for first grade. I'm going to show you right now my second grade one. And these are tools that I had collected. And the great thing is that it looks a lot like an iPad. So students kind of have some familiarity. They can look, they see, oh, that icon, that's for 10 marks, that's for Dreambox, this is for Raz Kids, and they click on it, it takes them to that page. So if I click on Raz Kids, it's going to open up the Raz Kids page. Um, just like any, uh, let me close that, just like uh, your iPad would allow you to launch an app. Um, so you can see we've got Hopposites, we've got Noun Dunk. Um, I used to have basically research tools down here. Math is over here. Uh, reading and writing is up here. And then there'd be specific topics uh, within literacy that they could find stuff up here for as well. Um, and I can color code the icon so I can say all the Perhaps all the math ones are green, or you have to do the white ones before you can choose to do the orange ones. Um, it's just a great way to just simply put all those different websites together for kids to be able to navigate to easily. They don't have to read a list. They can actually see the icons and identify websites by icons. All right, let's see if I can show you 10 marks again. 10 marks, basically, it allows you to keep students um, working on math at their own level, and you can actually assign uh, lessons for them to do. It gives them little video tutorials. Um, it's really kind of a more probably middle school-based uh, math curriculum Um not necessarily curriculum, but kind of an online program uh, like iReady or like any of those other programs uh, that they have out there. Uh, the great thing is that uh, the basic 10 marks is free to use. Um, as I say, grades one through high school. Um, there's also another great site uh, for teaching math that I actually have never used but I've heard incredible things about so I do want to show it to you it's called manga high and it is games based math and it's free um, let's see so they have many games uh, for students to practice they're all free they allow you to keep track of how your students are doing. Um, let's see this video in action. Adding up to 10, subtracting up to 10. Typing in the numbers. There we go. Three minus three is zero. So I'm trying, you know, not to allow it to, or I'm trying to add as many as I can. And you can see that other students are doing this as well. And it looks like one student's about to beat me. They topped it. I'm going to stop this right now. Um, but there's many different math games online. There's carrot sticks which is basically if you're going to do minute math in your classroom this is a much better way because students enjoy it um, they do try to be fast because they can play against somebody else so I can pick an opponent um, and I'll say let me see I want to play against somebody who's here I'm going to play against this student yep I want to challenge them I can't talk to them all I can do is challenge them and either they accept or they don't accept um, 
that student's not accepting. Let's see if I can get another student to engage in me. But basically, it's going to become a math challenge. Like, who can solve these problems faster? And you get carrots for just getting your own questions right. Um, so there's no big, oh, no, they won and they get all the points and I get none. They do get some extra points for winning. But as you can see, uh, the people who are online right now aren't looking to challenge. But I can go in here and start earning myself some carrots right now just by solving these problems and typing in the answers on my keyboard. Oh, and now somebody wants to challenge me. Yes, I'd love to challenge Keyshawn. Now you can set this up so they can only challenge kids within their own class or they can challenge kids around the world. And the great thing is, I mean, there might be some adults on here who are just ready to go really fast and humiliate a student maybe, but that's really the worst that can happen because there's no way to communicate with these other people who you're playing with. Now, this is not loading, so I'm going to quit this. Um, but I'll also show you Arcanemic Skill Builders, which is very similar to Carrot Sticks and these other ones. They're games. They're practicing a specific skill. Um, I can create my name. And that's basically all that anybody else sees about me. Now, I'm going to be engaged. I'm going to be trying to get all the answers the best that I can. And you can see that there's students who are doing better than me, or maybe it looks like I'm in the lead. Um, and I start speeding up based on, this, on how I do. But, I mean, it's really just a new way, a different way to have them practice. Uh, their math facts. And you know what? Maybe they start out and they feel like, oh, I'm just going to guess. And they realize that they don't get very far by guessing. Um, so then they're actually going to try to use this as practice. And I will... Nope, I thought I would try to give somebody else first place, but I guess... <laughs> um, all right there's multiplication there's all different kinds of uh, math skills that they can practice with this kid blog you have students journaling why not have them journal online now this is going into moving what you're doing into a paperless form so take what you're doing in the classroom try to move it into a paperless version it's an easy way to start. You're doing minute math in class? Try carrot sticks. Doing journaling in class? Try blogs. Have students blog. The great thing is this is closed off for my class. So somebody else might find my, my class blog, and this is what they're going to see. They're going to see the title. They're not going to see any of the comments because they have to be logged in. But once one of us is logged in, me or one of my students, you can see all the comments that we've had. And you can see that a student wrote, I replied to them. Um, each student responded. They actually can create their own blog posts about topics that they're interested in. Um, it's just a way of, of giving a new audience to their writing. They're not just writing inside their notebook and whoever they, they might show their notebook to. This is open to the whole class. Um, and then this opens them up for understanding how to participate in online conversations and how to engage in an online forum before they actually hopefully are doing those things uh, through Facebook or any of those other tools at home. Classroom news. If you do classroom news in your class, well, there is something called Photo Booth on the Mac. Uh, I believe they have an equivalent version on the PC, but I can't think of the name right now. Um, but basically, it allows you to uh, record yourself. So let's see which camera am I in right now. So I'm in this camera right now, and I can create a video and share all of the things, the news. I can even hold up uh, different stuff that's going on. 
in the news and, or my show and tell. And then when I'm done, I save it and then we can watch it later. So this is something that I was recording earlier. I'm going to stop that right now. Screencasting. That's what I talked about uh, with the edgy creations. If you make anchor charts and you want anchor charts to be accessible at home uh, and you happen to have students who have internet access at home, then create those anchor charts with short videos. So then when students go home, they can actually watch that video to support them in whatever they should be learning about. Do you like to play review games in your class? Well, try Jeopardy. Uh, this free flash version allows you to have students review different topics. You can do this as a whole class. And the great thing is that there are Jeopardies created for so many different topics already uh, that you really don't have to go and invent any yourself. Pretty much any topic that you're looking for, uh, you know, nouns and verbs, uh, different points in history, there's already videos for each of those, or sorry, there's already Jeopardy review games for each of those. Um, so I could click on the game where I'm looking for. Okay, so where to go for more ideas? If you're looking for iOS apps, that's iPad, iPod, iPhone, a great place to go is iEar.org, ieducationappsreview.org. Uh, the great thing is that there are collections of apps, there are reviews. Uh, so if I click here on lists of apps, then schools have shared apps that are especially useful to them. Escondido Union School District is one of the first school districts who did um, really any innovation with the iPods. So this is a great uh, resource here. I know people who love to visit freetechforteachers.com, which is written by Richard Byrne. He shares lots of cool tools, um, as well as iPad apps, Android tools, Google, everything that you could be looking for. He really shares a lot of great things here. The OnQ Journal is especially for Q members. Um, issues, it says, are also available to non-members for $4.99, but you can get them on your iPad. And it's a collection of great um, articles. This last one was on flipped teaching and learning, um, as well as ISTE, which is the International Society for Technology and Innovation in Education, also has um, a magazine out. Um, and again, it's, a, it's free for members and relatively cheap for non-members um, and lots of different uh, tools and ideas about how to integrate technology. Projects by Jen is actually really amazing. Jen Wagner is a teacher who has figured out ways to include classes from around the world in these amazing projects. Um, one of the most famous projects that they have is the Oreo competition with the stacking of Oreos. Um, but you can see that there are many other projects that they have here on projects by Jen. Rock Our World is a great collaborative that in fact many students um, from Ravenswood have participated in before. Um, and you can see actually on the left hand side that I've been conversing with uh, Caroline McGuire. Uh, but this is a music video that was created on the Bellhaven campus uh, with many of the students who are now probably in third grade, depending on when you're watching this, could be in fourth grade. Um, but it's all about sharing music and creating music and working with people around the world. Uh, you do need to use Max for this. If you're in our district and you're interested in this, I can make sure that you have Max to do it. 
Um, so please don't worry about that being uh, something that would get in your way. Mystery Skype. Mystery Skype, pretty incredible. Because basically what it is, is you video chat with a class around the world. Your kids don't know where they are. Those kids don't know where you are. And basically, you share geography tidbits and other useful hints that will help them figure out where you are in the world. And at the same time, you guys will be trying to figure out where they are. Um, it's just a really fun way to get geography involved, get your kids connecting to classes you know, around the world. So it's a pretty fun and engaging way to get them public speaking, practicing all those speaking and listening skills that they need to that they need to practice for the common core so okay so i already moved into staying motivated um clacko.com is short for class connect um but it's basically a place sort of like a canvas sort of like pinterest that allows you to collect different tools so right here i've got ed tech resources and you can see that i have songs in here i have Socrative. i can tag different things and put these into collections um, i can see if anybody has created collections on something that if i could spell then it would be better um, to see if they so i see many of these teachers they teach uh, algebra and maybe one of them if I click on them they might have uh, they do have a binder of geometry um, hopefully you know the idea is to build this up so there's many more t teachers and tools on there also peers there are some incredible people doing incredible things in your school in schools around you in schools around the world if you can't find somebody, go on Twitter and just say what you're looking for and put the hashtag EdChat at the end. And I'm sure that you'll get at least one person who, who writes back to you and is interested in what you're doing or wants to collaborate with you. And you just build up your professional learning network that way. So before I go, uh, I want to leave you with uh, this video as kind of some thoughts and I'll, I'll follow up with it in a moment. An ideal way to study a film and prepare to use it with your class is to preview it with pencil in hand taking notes as the film progresses. The eye of the motion picture projector cuts through the barrier of distance to let students observe people and places half a world away, to witness the drama while they consider the problems of our times. And finally, students can see through the use of classroom films what they need to understand as they develop their skills for the future. The lens of a motion picture projector is an eye that can help you stimulate motivate, educate your students. People have been selling that each one of these tools from film to TV to computers to the internet to iPads to interactive whiteboards are going to change the face of education, change the way that kids are educated and stimulated and motivated. It's not the tool. It's how you strategically use those tools to help enhance your own teaching and your students' learning. I know that I've shared so many different tools with you. I know that you're not going to use all these tools in your classroom. I didn't even use all these tools in my classroom. And I surely stumbled along the way. But my challenge is for you to take one thing and think about how you can make that impact your classroom. It doesn't even have to be 
what other people might consider technology as far as computers. But I hacked my classroom with whiteboard desks. We painted the desks with whiteboard paint. And then I was able to put notes up on the, the door. Um, students were able to show their work on their desks. I could keep track of running records and student questions on the back table as I worked with them. I kept records of everything by taking images. We wouldn't use this for everything, not for if we're going to publish work, but we use this for our practice. And it may not seem like Oh, that's high tech technology, but it's just a new tool being used to support student learning. And that's really what this whole session is about. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. You can see my email, my Twitter account, and my webpage here. Um, additionally, if you are a Ravenswood educator, I will have a survey for you to fill out at the end. And upon completion of this, you will be paid for your participation. So thank you very much for everybody, anybody who has been um, with me during this session. I hope that you've gotten something valuable out of it. Um, and if you haven't, my email, Twitter, website right there. And please contact me because... My goal is to be able to support you in effectively increasing student learning, student achievement, um, and student engagement as well. Thank you.